So hopefully you can see my slides. And these are the two plants we'll be talking about today, Java water dropwort and mile a minute wheat. So this is the first one that I want you with your eagle eyes out there in the field to be on the lookout for, and that's Java dropwort. Um, it goes by many, many different names. So some people will call it Java water dropwort. Some people might call it just water dropwort or Java dropwort or Vietnamese parsley, Japanese parsley, water celery, so many different names for this species. Um, but it's not native to North America. It's native to Asia and it's part of the carrot family. So if you look at this, you might look at this picture and think, huh, I think I've seen things like this before. And and you certainly have, you know, we have many other species, both native and non-native in this carrot family, but I'm going to show you a few more pictures of it in some video that'll hopefully help you pick it out and recognize it as something different if you happen to see it. Um, so it really likes super wet areas. That's something, you know, to note about this species um, is that it likes the standing water. You might see it in a place uh, with a lot of water. And again, you can see these leaves growing very densely, uh, unlike some of our other species. And another thing to note about it is that it has these uh, umbels of flowers, these little collections of flowers, much like many of the other plants in the carrot family that we have around here. Um, so these white uh, kind of flower clusters, and of course the um, uh, carrot-like leaves as well that we've got uh, right here. Um, so uh, just kind of something else to keep in mind is that we do have other plants that can look kind of similar. So you know, just because you see something that's kind of like this isn't necessarily a cause to really be concerned, but I do encourage you to post it online and check with other people because they can let you know. Um, and just kind of if you wonder where did this come from, how did we get this plant here all the way from Asia, there's a number of good reasons. So first off, it's uh, sometimes used ornamentally. So the, here's a picture of a variegated variety uh, that can be sold um, commercially. Just because it's pretty does not mean you want it in your landscape, though, because it won't stay put there. And if it gets out, it can get out of control. Um, it's also uh, really valued, um, you know, from a culinary perspective in many different cultures. So when I looked online for this species, I found several different dishes that are prepared uh, with the plant. Plant. Um, but I would caution you that just because this plant is edible, there are other plants in that same carrot family that are edible, as well as some that are definitely not. Uh, so something you don't want to confuse. And here's a map of where it is now. And you can see that Kentucky is a little white spot on the map, like it's not there yet. Oh, but wait just a minute. Just a few weeks ago when we had our City Nature Challenge, which is a great citizen science event where people report the diversity of different species in different areas, uh, one observant person uh, noticed this plant where they were in the Louisville area and took some pictures of it. And fortunately, some other really observant people uh, on iNaturalist, which is where this data was collected, um, said, you know what, that doesn't look like any of our native uh, plants. I think that might be this invasive plant. And because this is a really new species to us, uh, it's really important to know where it is. So if you see something, I'm asking you all to report it. But also, uh, we don't have lots of it yet. Um, so we wanted to share with you a really short video from someone uh, uh, who is in an area with a lot more of this species. So Billy has a short video that he's going to share of what to look for when you're looking for uh, Java water drop. So this is Java drop wort. Uh, Ananthe javanica. Sometimes it's called Java water drop wort, although lots of things are called drop wort. Some of those are very, very poisonous. Uh, Chinese celery, Indian pennywort, water celery, all sorts of names. It's um, uh, it's a plant that's uh, that's in the carrot family. Um, you can see it's got the the flat uh, flower tops, what they call umbels, flat on top, a bunch of little florets all put together, which is typical of the carrot family, and most of them are white much like Queensland's lace and wild carrots would be. Um, this is unfortunately 
a nasty invasive species. This was brought over from, uh, from well, it's, it's native to Asia and, and Australia, um, India, so forth. And it's been brought over, unfortunately, and sometimes deliberately planted in our, um, in our wetlands, uh, most, mostly for culinary reasons by uh, mostly uh, Asian cultures. And while it is uh, supposedly, I mean, many, many of the um, uh, plants in the carrot family, parsley family, are edible, like carrots and parsley, um, dill. But other ones, such as poison hemlock uh, and so forth, are extremely dangerous. In fact, poison hemlock may be the most poisonous plant that we have in, um, in North America, and it's what, uh, you know, what killed off uh, Socrates. Um, th so this plant, unfortunately, uh, was released here, and it is a very edible plant. It's uh, considered a uh, delicacy in some things, particularly in Japanese, uh, in some da Japanese festivals. But Java dropwort, which is an aquatic plant, you see it's growing here on the edge of this uh, this, so this wetland um, can just take off. You can see how it's already covering this small patch and then after it does so it'll continue to spread um, throughout the moist areas around the edge. So something that we really do not like to see in any of our uh, parks. Uh, this we're going to have to get rid of, we're going to have to destroy um, and hopefully it, I don't see any more of it so I'm hoping that we have it under control right here and that this particular Java dropboard pet colony is here, and that's all we're going to get. Great. So thank you, Billy, for sharing that video. And, um, you know, again, the message here is just if you see something, say something, right, with uh, Java water dropwort or other species, because um, we don't want it to establish here. And so in addition to that species, another another new invasive plant that I want you to be on the lookout for this summer um, is mile a minute weed. And so here you can see a photo of this plant really different from the one we just discussed, which is going to be that herbaceous species that's in those more wetland areas or ripe Parian areas, mile a minute weed is a vine. And you can see kind of that vine growth here, but you can certainly see it in this picture. It is kind of taking over this whole hillside and growing really, really densely. This is all that mile a minute weed. Um, and it can form these really dense uh, carpets that can overtop other plant communities, uh, kind of reducing the diversity there, and in our woodland context, uh, suppressing regeneration of trees. So you're not going to see your seedlings growing into bigger seeds or bigger trees if they're just covered with this mile a minute weed. Um, so something that's very distinctive about mile a minute weed, um, as you start to scout for it, is that it has these very uh, uh, unwelcomed downward curved thorns on the stems. So you can see them right here. There are these kind of recurved thorns. And if you're trying to pull it up, let me tell you, uh, you will notice this because they can definitely prick you. And it's something you're going to want to wear gloves if you see it to pull it up um, because those thorns are quite distinctive. Um, a few other things to note about it as you're scouting around, its leaves have this really distinctive triangular shape, um, especially on the underside. Uh, they have this very light green color, and the upper surface is uh, slightly darker, but still light green color. Um, and these are the fruits of mile a minute weed. You wouldn't really notice the flowers. There's nothing too showy about the, them, but the berries are kind of distinctive because they have this uh, beautiful pastel uh, color and kind of come in different colors. They turn this metallic blue over time. Um, but definitely not something you want uh, to see those berries really stick out and they can help to disperse mile a minute weed um, either floating through water or on contaminated soil or equipment uh, is going to be the way that they're most readily moved to a new location. Um, so where is mile a minute weed right now? Well, if you were to look at a map, you'd see, oh, there's none in Kentucky, right? But the reason why I want you all to be on the lookout for it is that last year, kind of similar to what happened uh, with uh, the species we just discussed, is that someone posted a picture on iNaturalist that looked a little suspicious, right? This is 
This is not something that we normally have occurring here, but they were curious about what it was. And they also posted it um, on the Kentucky Native Plant Society page. Um, and I think this is great because as soon as they posted this, people could say, wait a minute, you have this invasive plant. Uh, we know, can we help you get rid of it? And sure enough, uh, myself and colleagues at the Office of Kentucky Nature Preserves and with the Kentucky Invasive Plant Council corresponded with this landowner, uh, found the patch that they had observed and helped them remove it. So here you can see some different folks pulling that invasive vine out of the bushes that it was growing in. And you can see them wearing gloves because right those thorns are not fun uh, pulling that out and bagging it up so you can see those vines and the tiny kind of metallic blue berries that would be the start of next year's infestation if they didn't get them um, so bagging up all of those plants that we could find scouting the area and um, here you can see my technician uh, Lee Grace with a lot of bags of a uh, mile a minute vine. And so I think the, the moral of this story is if you see something, say something. So here's a photo of those great landowners who, you know, were curious about what that was, reported it online, and then through their proactive uh, work, you know, were able to eradicate that locally. It's nowhere else, and we really don't know how it got there, but we don't want it to spread from there out into other areas. So if you see some new invasive species or just something you're kind of concerned about, I encourage you to say something either to your local county agent or your forester or use the technology that's at your fingertips to report it online. If you're reporting a new invasive species, the great news is that will connect you to a network of other people who can help you from there. So whether it's mile a minute or Let's say it could be a different invasive species. This is spotted lanternfly, an invasive insect that we don't want to see in Kentucky. Um, if you see something, uh, do use iNaturalist and other tools to report this. So if you haven't used iNaturalist before, I really recommend you download the app to your phone and make an account. You can also visit it online on their website, iNaturalist.org. But the great thing about iNaturalist is that you can use it a variety of different ways. You can use it to help you with identification um, and to report species. So here's a short video where I you know, just opened my app and you can just take a picture of something. In this case, it's an invasive plant that I don't wanna see winter creeper and it will kind of provide an automatic identification of what that might be. So it's gonna suggest some different species but right there at the top is the invasive species that I don't want to see. So not only is it great for identifying things, but when you ob observe that, it will share that with a broader community and can alert people to the presence of new invasives. You can also use iNaturalist to look at other observations in your area and beyond, you know, see what people are noticing all over. Um, so I really recommend that as a tool. And I really encourage all of you to get out there and observe. And if you see anything unusual, you know, it's much better to be safe than sorry. I would rather get uh, lots of emails about things that aren't these invasive, new invasives we don't want to see uh, than to miss them.